It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. I'm just listening with a smile on my face. I love that you're <laughs> telling me about neuroscience. <laughs> it's so fun. This is great. From not quite Dr. Kylie Coulson. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. I can't believe it's Friday again. I can't believe that we're halfway through August. I can't believe that we're nearly at the end of the year. Mrs. Happy Families. Kylie, what's going on? I'm not someone who counts down the days until Christmas like some people do. Mm. But I am actually getting really excited about Christmas. I, I can't believe we're even talking about it. <laughs> September, Father's Day, it's a couple of weeks away. And then it's I mean, th- then it's the end of term three and the downhill run through term four to the end of the year. Holy smokes. Uh, we should get on with today's podcast. There's a lot to discuss. Thank you so much for joining us on the Happy Families Podcast. I'm Justin. Uh, I'm here with Kylie. We've got six kids. I've written seven books about making families happy. And I've got a TV show called Parental Guidance on Channel 9. Season two is getting very, very close. I can't wait. Cannot wait for that. Um, We have had an overwhelming amount of feedback to the Happy Families podcast over the last uh, week or so. Our episodes seem to be creating more and more conversation, Kylie. You can contact us about what we're talking about, podcasts at happyfamilies.com.au. That's podcasts with an S at happyfamilies.com.au. We love your emails. We love even more when you send voice memos. But we didn't get any voice memos this week. But we got a bunch of emails. Uh, there was one that came through from an anonymous poster from the New South Wales Central Coast uh, in response to episode 568. This was the one where we talked about, do you leave your kids in the same school just so that they can have the stability that they need? Or do you move them because things aren't quite right? And that wrestle that we had in, in episode 568... So many parents are asking that question, trying to figure out how do I choose a school for my, for my child. We also just talked about the general process of choosing a school, but this feedback was great. In the podcast, I actually had posed the question, I wonder what it would have done for our kids if we personally had have stayed put, if, it, if we had have just left them in the same school, in the same community, whether it would have helped to, to build their resilience and you know, sense of security um, and stability in their lives. And this um, listener has wrestled with us as she shared all of her concerns and thoughts, but she acknowledged that in hindsight – We should have actually moved out of the area to find another school for our daughter. They did that. They stayed put, they stayed safe, and they've recognised, looking back over it, just how detrimental it was for their daughter. Which makes it so hard (laughs) because you hear that and you're like, oh, well, maybe we should move. But then you think, but if we move, what's going to happen? You you just never know. But I guess if you're in a tough spot. Uh, Anne also gave us similar feedback when she emailed us about that episode and episode 566. But The line that I'm going to read from her email, really simple. She said, thank you for your honesty about the struggles. Absolutely love Kylie. Everyone loves Kylie. No one ever says absolutely love Justin. Everyone always says absolutely love Kylie. We get this feedback all the time. Everyone loves Kylie. I'm just... Thank you. Just saying. (laughs) Yeah. We got some awesome feedback Start from back in the mailbox from Kelly. She's actually a Happy Families member, and this is in relation to episode five six five, where we talked about um, whether or not kids have the capacity to push our buttons. Mm. And, and I basically said, "No, you've they're your buttons. You protect them, and you you choose. No one can make you cranky." She said, I normally listen to your podcast kid-free on my way to work, but today I chose to listen to it in the car with my two children. My son pushes my daughters and our buttons all the time, so I felt it could be a benefit. I was wrong. (laughs) My seven-year-old son doesn't miss a beat, and when you explained that actually we need to check in with ourselves because it's not the kid's fault we are triggered, his response from the back seat of the car, arms in the air, was thank you. (laughs) Myself and my nine-year-old daughter looked at each other and laughed. Naturally, it was very beneficial, and I learned about W-I-N, win, which is new to me. Thanks for all the wonderfully insightful podcasts. I wonder, I imagine, I notice. Uh, what a great, what a great email. I can imagine I can, I can imagine a seven-year-old just going, yes, I can keep on doing, I can keep on destroying everybody's lives. It's up to you whether you get mad at me or not. If it had been our eight-year-old, she would have been victory. <laughs> She's, she could have been. All right, so uh, let's, uh, let's talk about I'll Do Better Tomorrow, Kylie. We had a whole bunch of other emails that we won't dive into because there's just too much to talk about. Uh, but thank you so much for taking Taking the time, I, we know you're busy, and you're actually taking time out of your day to send us an email about what we're talking about. We just, <laughs> we appreciate it so much. Uh, I'll do better tomorrow is what we usually talk about once we've been into the mailbag. 
every Friday. And uh, today, Kylie, I'll do better tomorrow from you. What have you got for us? Well, it's not book club, but I couldn't wait for book club. So I had to share a little bit of an insight. I'm not reading a parenting book at right. all. I'm actually reading a book about, um, it's it's conversations about trauma, resilience and healing by Oprah Winfrey and Bruce D. Perry. Um, and But what came out of it as I was reading uh, just the other morning was just such a beautiful aha moment when I think about a couple of quirks that one of our children has. The the line that stood out to me was just said, in order to communicate rationally and successfully with anyone, you have to make sure they're regulated, make sure they feel a sense of relationship with you and only then try to reason with them. Such a simple line, but I was thinking about our eight-year-old in particular. And as part of the book, he actually talks about the fact that when we get stimulus, it actually is processed from the lower part of our brain through to the top part. The lower part is survival rate. You would probably be able to explain this a lot better than me, but at the lower part of your brain, it's just, it's lower function. You talk about this idea of high emotions, low intelligence because everything happens at that space at the you're having so much fun watching me struggle to explain this aren't you i'm just listening i'm just listening with a smile on my face i love that you're telling me about neuroscience (laughs) this is great the neuropsychology of the child brain from uh should should we from a layman's perspective from not quite dr kylie coulson (laughs) So, so when, when, when our stress response is... Re- I know you've got this. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. See, what's happening right now is you're starting to feel a little bit panicked. Your lower <laughs> brain is taking over your, the higher part of your brain. It's not quite connecting right now. You're feeling stress and pressure. And as a result of that stress and pressure, your capacity to find your language and to articulate your words is diminishing. Your lower brain is taking over and saying, you just need to breathe. You just need to survive this. You've never tried to explain neuropsychology on the podcast before. That's Justin's idea. That's Justin's job. And it's getting really hard for you. But that's kind of what you're trying to get at, isn't it? That's exactly right. Did I do a good job? <laughs> I think I've, 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 I've painted the picture beautifully. <laughs> so my cortex so is not working right now. My higher brain is not functioning. And that's exactly what happens to our children. Mm. And so we, our eight-year-old has very big emotions. And what happens when she gets into those emotions, whether it be it's time for school, it's time for bed, it's time, it's to, time to pack up, it's time to eat. It's time to give me a hug. It's time to do anything. She she has an outburst of emotion. And what I've noticed is that when I try to respond to her, it actually increases the response I don't actually want. Do you know why? Yes, because she's emotionally flooded and she's only working from her lower brain. That's part of it. But what are words when that's where you're working from? It's just noise. Yeah, it's, it's additional stimulus that you, you've already got too much going on. Your brain's retreating and now there's more being dumped onto you by your parent in the form of your parents communicating. It's just too much stimulus. Therefore, the brain goes like that and, and the outburst gets worse, not better. So what you've read essentially is saying when your kids are angry, they're dysregulated, the relationship's in tatters and they have no capacity for reason. And I have been trying to motivate her by encouragement You know, she doesn't want to go to school. And my next line would be, if we don't leave now, you're going to miss out on having time with so-and-so. Or if we don't leave now, then we're not going to be able to make it to the library on time so you can get your book or whatever it is. So it's not, I'm not dangling a carrot. It's just an acknowledgement. This is what's coming up. And I know you enjoy it, but she doesn't hear that. It just, like you said, it's just extra stimulus when her brain is already not functioning properly and it just blows out. What I actually need to do is to just stop, literally just stop. Because when I don't say anything, she'll storm off and within about two minutes, she's back in the room, completely functional and she's really ready to talk to me. But the aha moment for me was actually understanding what is happening. I can see it happening, but I've never actually understood the science behind it. And having understood the science behind it now makes it so much easier for me to just stop. Well, I'm so glad that being married to me and reading all of my books for all these years has 
helped you to now read this book by Oprah Winfrey and understand the brain science. That's well, I don't I, think I really do. I'm <laughs> obviously clearly having a hard time explaining it, but just that one little line has made a really big difference to the way I see and perceive what's going on now with Emily. More I'll Do Better Tomorrow next. It's the Happy Families Podcast. Your son just jumped from the veranda into the pool again or stayed up way too late playing video games. As a parent, you just don't get it. His actions are baffling and sometimes terrifying. If you're wondering what's going on, you're not alone. Check out the free Can We Please Talk About Boys webinar available now on the Happy Families web shop and learn just what's going on and how you can help. It's the Happy Families Podcast, the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. And I guess you're going to have a much better job explaining your thing. So this week I've been in New Zealand for most of the week. I got to spend some really fun time with the kids when I came home. But my I'll do better tomorrow is actually a reminder. Uh, Something happened this week in Adelaide. Uh, A man, a masked man, allegedly tried to abduct a young girl at Glenelg Primary School in Adelaide on Tuesday morning. And when I saw the story, it made me pause for just that moment and consider how precious our kids are to us. And, and that's, that's really my I'll do better tomorrow. The likelihood of something like this happening is breathtakingly low. But if it happens, if it happens to you, if it happens to your child, I don't know that you ever recover from something like that. I don't know how you move past the trauma, whether it's an attempt or the reality that it does happen in the case of, say, the Morecambs, Daniel Morecambe, that that awful story that we still talk about. That's how rare it is. The Daniel Morecambe story is still front and centre, top of mind for us, even though it was so long ago now. It rarely happens. But hearing the story about the little girl, grade four, someone comes into the school and attempts to abduct her, it really just hit home to me how important it is that we keep our kids safe, that we love them, we love them, we love them, and that we make sure that we're having the kinds of interactions with them that help them to know that when they're with us, they are secure. They're in a relationship that is protective and safe and beautiful. And that's kind of my take-home message. Our kids just need to be safe. They need to know that we love them. And it's our job as parents to help them to feel that as much as we can. It's probably worth going through some stats just to reassure parents. Our children are at far greater risk from people that we know and trust than They are from people who are outside the family, people who are bad actors, people who have um, ideas about taking them away. But every, every year or so, every six months, every year, we talk to our kids consistently about strangers and we teach them a handful of things. We teach them that most strangers are good people. We teach them that if they're ever approached by a stranger for some unanticipated reason, that they should always stay in public and that if they ever get lost or need help, that they should talk to a stranger, but we encourage them to look for a mum with kids. And that any stranger who asks for help from you or who tries to get too close to you is probably a bad actor because most adults don't rely on little kids for any help or don't try to become friends with little kids. There's there's something funny going on there. So th- what this girl did, she ran, she screamed, she got away, and she'd obviously been taught really well by her family that that's what you do. And what a what a wonderful wonderful outcome for her that she that she was safe. I think your acknowledgement that um, the stats would show clearly that more times than not, our children will actually be endangered by somebody they know means that conversations around tricky people are probably just as important as the conversations we have around stranger danger. Yeah, and even the term stranger danger, it's not encouraged. Experts in this area don't want us to be talking about stranger danger because we need to rely on strangers all the time yeah. and most strangers really are safe. It's being mindful of who's being tricky, who's asking you to keep secrets, who's asking you to go somewhere with them or help them and, and that just doesn't make sense. It's those conversations that matter and they're the ones that we need to have with our kids regularly. So that's, um, that's my I'll do better tomorrow. Just a reminder, if you haven't had a conversation like that with your kids for a while, it's a good idea to do it. It's important that we keep our kids safe. I love yours about making sure that if the kids are dysregulated, that we help them to be regulated so the relationship feels safe so that you can reason together because you can't reason when things are chaos. We really hope that you've enjoyed our I'll do better tomorrow podcast today. 
on the Happy Families podcast, which is produced by Justin Ruland from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. Have a great weekend. And if you want more info about making your family happier, please visit us at happyfamilies.com.au or on the Dr. Justin Coulson's Happy Families Facebook page. Thank you.